Kaylee McEnany is back and uh, trying to, I don't know, revamp her reputation, uh, rewrite history a little bit. Here is what she had to say about her own history with the truth and the likelihood that right wingers will get called lies even though they never actually lie. And then there was the question, will you ever lie to us? And I said without hesitation, no, and I never did. As a woman of faith, as a mother of baby Blake, as a person who meticulously prepared at some of the world's hardest institutions, I never lied. I sourced my information, but that will never stop the press from calling you a liar. Which is why my dad said, Kaylee, you've got to come up with a motto for your press shop. And I did, and our motto was this, offense only. Because, because I knew what we were up against. Republicans always get the bad headlines, always get the false stories, always get the lies, if I can use that word, told by the press. There is one standard for Democrats and another for Republicans. Okay, well, uh, their offense only offs, I did generally find pretty offensive, so that's true. Um, yeah, why play defense when you're lying? Just don't ever actually address the lies. That seems like a pretty savvy strategy. So, um, there, Francesca, uh, as a Christian woman, as a mother to baby Blake, she would never tell a lie. Yeah, I think the worst part about that entire thing, obviously, she is lying when she says she did not tell a lie. Yeah. Um, but is that she's, I think, in at a young women's summit, young women's leadership summit. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to think about what it is to lift up someone like Kaylee McEnany, who carried water for a an, a multiple alleged rapist, sexual assaulter, um, somebody who has utter disrespect for women, um, somebody who did a 180 on his on his ideas around uh, access to abortion rights, um, someone who split families up. And who put children in cages, someone who completely bastardized the idea of, of Christianity and, and religiosity, right? Of, of, of morals. I don't ascribe to a lot of those things, but like so the so-called Christian right does. And here they've lifted up their effective, like, you know, I don't know. Maybe when you've done all the deadly sins, you become God. I don't know. <laughs> like, is that does you do you just become the savior? Mm -hmm. But it is so painful as a woman, as someone who might be expect or asked to speak on that summit, or, or other people who might have been there. And I think Republican women have they put a ceiling on themselves all the time, which is we are strong, we are leaders as long as we are carrying out the orders of a very strong man. I mm -hmm. love being number five. I love being a number seven <laughs> in this this natural pecking order um, where the man is first. Like that is, I've spoken to women at conferences like this, and they said to my face, "I just think we need a big strong man. I think you know this country is ready for a strong man, and he just he's strong and he's a leader." And like that is such a ingrained patriarchy and pathology. Um, and and like even young Republican women, I think are fighting back against against it. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I've heard that. You know, uh, I don't go to those things, but I've seen it on videos. And uh, unfortunately for us in the future, so uh, stay tuned for this. It is not a very big gap to move from we need a strong man to we need a strong man. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, that's it. Yeah, you're totally right. Uh, look, I I dare to dream that someday. Um, you know, these horrible lying Republican women won't be number five or number seven, that we can get one of them <laughs> actually in charge. And think about considering everything you know about the right, about their elected leaders, about their media, how horrible of a person would you have to be to make it through that as a woman, considering all the baked in misogyny and all that? Oh God. My God. Anyway, and by the way, um, as you pointed out, she's lying when she says that she doesn't lie. She knows that she lied. That's the job. Like, I don't know how much it bothered her, the insane lies she had to tell. I think that at a certain point, even for someone like her, it would. But what's even more amazing then is to lie about telling lies 
while claiming you couldn't be lying because you're a Christian and because you're a mother to baby Blake. So for, first of all, like using God as a shield against your lies shows that you care kind of as little about God as you do about the truth. I'm not a religious person, but if I was, I wouldn't use them to hide my lies to cover for a raping fascist. I just wouldn't. And second of all, um, motherhood is an amazing thing. Doesn't really have anything to do with your capacity to tell a lie afterward. Like no. I, I, that's a weird thing to say. Also, can I just say this? And maybe this will turn me to being the bad guy. It's really weird when you say something like mother to baby Blake. It's a baby. His name's Blake. You can just call him Blake. It's weird to say baby Blake. It just seems like propaganda. It seems weird. I don't know. Like Blake is anyway, definitely seven at this point. You're like no, baby no, Blake. He's definitely a baby, but no. like. Don't hide behind God and your baby while you're lying. That's Here's, weird. No, it is very weird. Also, like being a parent makes you a better liar. Like that's you all you think? have to do as a parent is lie to your child all the time. Yes, mm -hmm. everything's gonna be fine. No, we're not going to be huddled over an oil drum in 20 years and <laughs> you know, cooking street rats because we haven't stopped climate change. Oh my god, go to trading school. cans of cat food. Like, <laughs> oh, I got a good one. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Anyway. <laughs> okay, really. <laughs> <laughs> the way to, to get her is cat based humor. <laughs> anyway. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.